Welcome again to the Skill Work Forum. As always, I'm Tim. Welcome. Uh, joined, I should say. <laughs> joined by my... Uh, welcome to the Skill Work Forum. <laughs> joined by my partner here, Brett. And today we're going to do a little spin on the show. Maybe you uh, saw it one time or another called Mythbusters. These guys would go in and try to prove, you know, a, a common misperception or belief. So we're going we're gonna to take a kind of a spin on that today. And, and we're going to talk about skilled trade shortage myth. And there are a couple of mis perceptions around there surrounding the skilled trades and you know everybody talks about a skilled trade shortage um there are some though that would say we don't really have a shortage issue we have an incentive issue uh, which is an interesting way to look at it and i think before we completely dismiss that argument we ought to take a look and see if there's really any truth to the fact that there's not a shortage of Folks, there's a shortage of incentive or maybe attitude. Mm-hmm. Well, I think a lot of times, Tim, like you said, you know, when when you, you know, we hear it from from skilled trades people out there that say, you know, there's there's it's a it's a pay issue. You know, if they just pay us more, then you know we wouldn't have a have a sh- shortage. That you know you can argue that whichever way you want to, um, but but the reality is, I think, as we look at it, Tim, like you said, we're going to unpack this idea of, of, of maybe there's a little more to the incentive than just the pay. But, but first of all, let's look at the kind of the heart of the truth of this severe shortage, you know, that, you know, there are some realities um, that are pretty hard to deny. And so, you know, we, we deal in this skilled trade space exclusively. And so, you know, the baby boomer exodus that, that you know, or, or the resignation or the exit, how, whatever you want to refer to it as, it's a very real thing. Um, it's the current the current rate um, just in the skilled trade space um, of is about three to one. So said a little bit different. So for every baby boomer that is retiring and leaving the skilled trade space, there's one millennial or or Gen X, you know, younger generation person that's that's basically ready to come in and and take that. So that. Three to one ratio uh, pretty much guarantees, you know, that it's not sustainable. Right? It's, it's not sustainable. So we have to figure that out. COVID, we've talked about it here, you know, the impact of COVID the last two years, um, you know, and when COVID first happened, we weren't exactly sure what the impact. Obviously, none of us were of that. But the reality was COVID took an already very strained workforce and accelerated the issues. So, so for example, if, if you're 64 years old and you're thinking about, well, I'm going to work another three or four years, and two years ago, COVID comes on the scene, and you decide, you know, maybe I'm done. And, 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 and so that, we saw it happen. So we talked to many, many facilities that, that lost sooner than they were hoping. They were hoping they could get some of those baby boomers to work another three or four years, right. and in, instead, just because of the the challenges in the environment, they they opted opted out. On top of that, kind of the the, the third piece, and there's other factors as well um, that are that would support the that that the shortage is true. Um, is the just the skills requirement? You know, Tim, we've probably that's probably been the biggest thing we've seen in the last year, and the request that we get. To provide, you know, um, clients, you know, the skilled talent that they need is just a higher, higher elevation in those skills. So as facilities are having to to automate more because of the challenges they have on the front end labor, it's putting more demand for more control technicians, more electronics, more electrical, more, you know, refrigeration type, more specialty skills, you know, so that demand. So, so now you need, you've got not just a shortage, you also have a skills, right. a skills shortage. Right. So. Yeah. So, I mean, those things taken together, it's pretty easy to knock down the, the, you know, the thought that there is no shortage, right? And that's pretty clear there is, and there's a lot of reasons for it. You can ask any of the guys we work with, and they will confirm that. I'm sure you're dealing with it as well. But I think that what we can poke at a little bit is the why behind that. Mm -hmm. Because I think that the common perception is that what's pay? You know, they don't make enough. It's not a good. It's not a good path to pursue coming out of high school. Uh, You know, it's it's just for the also rans. 
it's not a good way. I can't support my family. I can't have the things that I aspire to do. And so the question is, is it truly a pay thing? As some would indicate, is it that exclusively? Is it a combination? So here's some here's some statistics, some some hard facts. Wages in the trades in just the last 24 months are up 15 to 20 percent. That's well above even our current inflationary rates that are seven percent or higher. So the wages are up. Um, all the demand that Brett talked about that's driving uh, a need for a higher level of skill. And higher levels of skill, some of the things you talk about, automation, control techs, electricians, they get paid even higher. So the wage um, opportunity is there. This is probably going to surprise some people, but the average salary, this is this is new hot off the press you know, statistics. So the average salary for a four-year college graduate is about 43 to 65 k per year. That's average. Now, I mean, there's always outliers, of course, but... Just looking at average numbers, 43 to 65 k per year, and the cost for that education is about 140 k. So, assuming you you know maybe you're very frugal and you put 10 percent towards paying that off, yep. most people go into it with debt. I mean, it's going to take you a long time. I know many people that are in their 30s, even today, they're still paying college debt. So, you're making 43 to 65 k a year. You got to pay off your college education. And the payoff for that, you can do the math. But let's take a look at skilled tradesmen uh, on the opposite side of that. The average pay for a skilled technician is 54 to 67 k per year, so roughly 10 percent more, maybe a little bit more than that. With mostly opportunity for overtime pay, most college uh, graduates are on a salary, so there's no opportunity for overtime. Uh, skilled craftsmen, you get an opportunity for overtime. So their their wages can jump 76 to 90K. We have people working for us that make over 100K and uh, in, in, in what they make. And that's that's a great living. And the cost for their education, conversely, is about a third, about mm-hmm. 33K. It takes two and two, about two, two and a half years to complete versus four. Most college kids that I know of take a victory lap, so it's five years. Um, so you can earn a wage much more competitive much sooner. So these statistics would kind of tend to indicate that it's not just a wage issue. Yeah, I mean, I mean the, you know, like you know, you know one of my favorite sayings is, you know, numbers don't lie, people do. And so so, you know, the the these are these are the numbers. I mean, this is the reality. Now, you know, in fairness, you know, if you want to if you want to peel it back further and you say, well, yeah, but over a full ca- career, you know, certain college degrees are going to earn more than maybe attention. I think that gap will continue to close as the demand for for skilled trades. But no question coming right out of school that what these numbers support is it's 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 not a uh, it's not a, a pay issue uh, that's that's totally driving this uh, this shortage, which is absolutely real. So, what is it? So w- we would suggest, and and probably spend you know the balance of our of our time today talking about what is the other factor? What why are why is there such a shortage? And we would say that it's it's really more of a popularity issue. That you know we are we are now living in and have been for a little bit while you know a little while we're experiencing the cost of devaluing the trades for the past 20 years, you know, and so, you know, what does, uh, you know, what does that mean? Or as you know, how, you know, uh, different people, you know, especially in today's um, world, sometimes, you know, we say, you know, if you, if you say something and, you know, enough times it, it becomes the truth. And so, you know, as you know, we talk a lot about devaluing the trades, but is that, is that true? Is that is that really um, something that's true? And so, you know, I think Tim, we would we would suggest we talk about it occasionally. And and I would say, you know, when's the last time that you went to uh, a high school graduation party of a senior, and you walked in and they've got they've got the banner for the trade school or the trade they're going to go get? No, they've got their 
they've got their Nebraska, you know, sign. They've got their, you know, uh, and 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 our natural tendency always is to is our first question is almost always, you know, well, where are you going to go to? Where are you going to school? Where are you going to study? And we're not, you know, we're not expecting them um, to say, uh, well, you know, I decided, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go get my electrical degree or my electrician, you know, a trade, whatever that, that trade may be. So, you know, this has been going on, you know, for at least 20 years. At least. Yeah. And, and so, Subtly, we have sent a message to to this to a whole generation now that that you know you know we even call vocational schools alternative education or non traditional <laughs> education, and so by nature, you know as 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 this has been programmed, I think you know I think you know I've said it before you know you know Mike Rowe points out that in the 70s or 80s, whenever it was, you know, every high school counseling office, you know, had a had a sign that said, you know, you know, work smart, not hard. You know that that these little things have sent this these subtle messages that if you choose to go down the path of trade school um, or to learn a trade versus going to college, that it's it's viewed as something lesser than the other. So. Obviously, when you teach a whole generation that, are we really that surprised that you got three leaving and you've got one coming in, um, and and we've got to change this trajectory? Yeah. yeah, when it when when it makes no sense when you boil it down and you come to a discussion about you know why are you going to why are you getting an education? Um, you know, at the end of the day, it's well I want to you know support my family, I want to make an income, and I want to go travel, I want to go do this and that. Occasionally, you know, when you're younger, you have these you know, ideals you want to pursue. And, you know, and there are certain things like a doctor, an attorney, sure. an, an accountant, et cetera. But a lot of students go to college just to go to college. And, and they, I think, would rather, and their parents would rather, them take on 100000 plus of debt, have a degree that doesn't really do anything for you, spend five, six years getting it, to be able to say they're going to college or they have a college degree, Versus earning more, having something that you can actually use. Uh, particularly, we just had a conversation earlier about when, you know, if and when the economy ever goes south, and you're going to depend on having a, an ability to do something with your hands. Uh, you know, I mean, it, me me offering you the ability to make a, a triple grande grande latte with soy milk, you ain't going to care about that. You're going to no. want to know somebody that can do something for you. So. It's crucial that we. So, so your point, Brett, is it may not be all a pay thing. As a matter of fact, it's probably much more a psychological, a cultural thing uh, that we're talking about. So the facts are clear here that the myth that there is a skilled trade shortage is not a myth. It's true. <laughs> it's there. But I do think there is a myth surrounding why that we try to articulate here. Um, there is a major skill trade shortage. Cost alone and the, the amount you can make would support pursuing a trade. That on it on its on its on the surface would support that. Less cost to enter, quicker path to higher wages, annual salaries that are above college grad to start with. So we don't have an incentive issue. We have a a popularity issue. We have a cultural issue. We have a psychological issue. Marketing. You know, essentially, is what's happened. People have been marketed and sold that this is what you should aspire to do. Anything else of that than that, you're less than. And we have to change that. We have to get away from that. I, I think it's important that we you know, show up at a graduation party and you know, not don't assume that. And it's even I find myself doing it. Oh, you're not going to school, you're not going to college. Oh, yeah. Must well, not be smart. Must have problems. Must yeah. this. Must that. We send we send the wrong message, you know. You know, our challenge would be we, we have to change everybody's attitude, you know, from a standpoint in that you know we cannot continue to when when we ask somebody, you know, you know, we need to flip the flip the script, as they say. When instead of asking that kid, you know, hey, what, you know, what 
what school are you going to or what are you going to study? You know, you know, if we could get to the point where the first question is, you know, hey, what trade are you going to study? And actually be almost surprised that, well, I'm not going to study a trade. You know, I've decided, you know, I'm going to, um, as I like to tease Tim, you know, I'm going to go to Arkansas and try to understand the the, the understanding, the history of being a Razorback. Now, there is and, value and, in that. And, and, I can see the value in that now. But. <laughs> so it's one of those, you know, I'm not sure how you get a how you get a job knowing the history of, of a Razorback. I don't even know what a Razorback well, is. Well, I mean, how many, how many times we hear like, well, I don't know what I'm going to really study. I'm just going to go and, you know, I'm going to find myself or I just wanted the experience. And, and we have parents, we've done it. Like, we just want to give them the college experience. I'm like, Why? I mean, there's value in it. I have a degree. We went to school. We're not discounting that. Yeah. But think about yourself and, and myself. When you're driving the day and you see somebody in a in a van that's a plumbing company, I mean, what's your first thought? Is it, huh, poor guy or must be lowest in his class or what have you? I bet the thought doesn't come to mind that that guy is probably making 30% more than I am with no debt and enjoying his life. I mean, that's, that's probably more of a reality. So it's a paradigm shift, and we're, we are very passionate about this. We appreciate people like Mike Rowe. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're seeing more and more people wake up to this idea. So we, we hope we can continue to beat, beat the drum for that. Oh. It's an important topic. Yeah, no, I think it, it's a very important. And again, like Tim said, you know, we're not... The difference is, is right now, there there and there has been for years, to push for every kid to go to college and and instead of recognizing that there's different paths to to a career that's all we're really saying is is to to right now you know you know you shouldn't make certain kids feel like they don't they're not as smart or they they feel lesser and let's just be honest i mean that's the reality of of where we've been for the last 20 years. I mean, we, you know, we founded our company on, on three values. You know, the first and most important to us is, is to bring honor to God in everything we do. But our number two value that we recognize because, you know, I spent 30 plus years, your dad, you know, in, in the manufacturing space, you know, his dad and my dad were both in the trades. And that second value is to bring honor and respect back to the trades. And because we recognize that, we're doing it for the for the ones that have already made the decision to be out there. We've now got to take it a step back further and bring value and respect back to those considering what path they're going to go, you know, to 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 better their self. And yeah. for a lo- for a a portion of them, I don't know what percentage, um, but for a portion of them, the trades is the right decision. Um, and for some of them, the the the, the four year or plus college education is the right decision. Um, but they should be viewed as equal, yeah. you know, not as as one's better than the other. Yeah, I mean, basically, it's about honoring it, you know, bringing honor and value to that, and respecting people. I mean, Brett mentioned our number one core values: honor to God, and and you know, God's perspective on this is He actually the Scripture says God is no respecter of persons, meaning that in His eyes, you know. We're equal, and uh, we believe that everybody has intrinsic value, and you shouldn't be, you shouldn't, your worth shouldn't be determined by what school you went to, or what you know, what job you have. Uh, it should be on, you know, like Dr. Martin Luther King famously said, the content of your character. Mm-hmm. So it's about a mindset change, and we're adamant about it. So, you know, myth busting today really is not necessarily about is there a skill trade shortage? Yes, there is, uh, but the why behind it and Maybe it would surprise you a little bit to find that it's not wages so much as it is mindset. So that's our our topic today. Hopefully you'll find that somewhat useful to to ponder and maybe think about providing some advice to a youngster looking at a career path as we're getting close to the graduation season Mm -hmm. here. It's almost upon us. So maybe in this season where we're thinking about kids graduating and, you know, you get a chance to maybe talk to them, provide a little advice, maybe consider pointing them in direction to at least consider Uh, a trade as a an honorable path forward so we hope this was helpful to you today on the skill work forum and before we go we just again want to recognize uh great friends of ours that we partner with texas boys outdoors great show on the pursuit channel you can find them on youtube wherever you wherever you can download videos these guys um, are we were partnering with them we're privileged to be able to sponsor their show and they focus on giving opportunities to 
um, military veterans, first responders, kids and adults with, um, you know, with disabilities. They do a great job. As a matter of fact, um, their season is, is ongoing right now. You can check it out. And the episode Brett was able to go down with one of our skilled workers, had a great time down there on a fishing trip. And uh, they were able to stage some fish that looked like Brett actually caught some, which I thought was really excellent to make, you know. Yeah, they're really good at what they do. Yeah, so. they're good. So, and uh, sometime around the time that this, that you'll see this around Memorial Day, we're also going to have an episode down there where I get a chance to take one of our skilled uh, craftsmen out for a hunting trip. Uh, going to go hunt wild hogs, which being a Razorback fan, I'm kind of having an ethical dilemma about that. But <laughs> at any rate, we're going to do that. And and maybe some turkey down there. Texas Boys Outdoors with Roy and his guys. So give it a listen. I think you'll really enjoy it, and, and, it, and it resonates very well with, with what we do here on the Skillwork Forum. So until next time, God bless you.